Welcome to NBS Show, episode number 245. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Where will you be when your laxative kicks in? Oh, God. I... Let's just hope at home near the bathroom. Exactly. Could you just imagine being in traffic? <laughs> Um, that's why you don't take anything like that before you operate heavy machinery. <laughs> uh, that's so true. How have you been, Will? I have been just fine, man. How have you? It's been a crazy week. Yep, yep. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. This would be our first recording for the New Year's, right? Yeah, this is the first time we're recording for the New Year. Ah, Nothing's changed. Let's continue. Yep, true that. Except we played more games. <laughs> yeah, yes, played maybe. more games. Got angry at more people on Overwatch. We're not gonna have any good luck, Norman. How has your game been? Like, uh, I noticed on my end, I've been playing a bit of solo, and some of them were okay. I don't know. How about how about your end? Uh, I'm this close to getting diamond, but I'm probably gonna be stuck in platinum forever. Ah. Uh, yep. Losing a lot of matches. Oh no no no! Just I'm not I'm not I'm not amazingly good and I'm not amazingly bad. So, eh. well, at least your number's high. I, I'm in the bottom thousand. Oh well, could be worse. You could be in the bottom one hundred. Eh, true. At least that tells me I'm not trash. <laughs> You're not a casual, that's for sure. Eh, true that. Uh, but talking about video games, uh, it seems that a game on Steam. Greenlight is, well, you know what Steam Greenlight is, right? Yeah, it's for, well, basically allowing independent projects to be, to have a platform. It allows Steam to be the uh, platform for people to publish their own games, thus allowing developers to get a majority of the profits and allow them to have um, a publisher without actually having to, well, have a publisher with all the downsides that that comes to. Of course, this means that uh, projects will live and die by... Uh, their end product, and unfortunately, Steam Greenlight is well. It has an issue with everything, with ninety percent of everything on there being absolute crap. Yeah, and some of them being rigged. But that's besides the point. And the point I'm trying to make here is that there's a pony game being um, greenlit or trying to be greenlit. There, it's called Battle Jam Ponies. So what this is is some kind of Pokemon s kind of battle system where. You select your pony, you battle another pony. And from what I can see here is that the ponies that you're battling are, well, villains from the My Little Pony canon show, whatever it is. Like, you got the Maniac, you got Changelings, and you got some others like Sweetie Bot and Golems and so on. So they're using fan-made stuff. Really, um, I think if they just kind of went with completely original designs, they might have a better chance. As for right now, if they're using those kind of designs, they may run into a few problems. Uh, true that, true that. But, you know, it's green light. So it takes a um, long time to get uh, the green thumbs up, as they say. Because this kind of <laughs> games uh, takes a certain number of quote-unquote likes before it can get on their way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not all, I mean... Just from what I'm seeing here from their page, it looks like they're doing something that's like, uh, oh, what do they want? They want fully animated um, attack sprites. It's going to be a lot of animation to do for each of these individual pixel sprites. They want to have it be an adventure game of exploring a vast world. Uh, they want it to be like an RPG. It sounds like what they're going for is almost like a Pokemon sort of level thing here. Even by looking at the elements that they're doing here for like fire, water, electricity, I see heavy amounts of inspiration from Pokemon. Pokemon does have a really good battle system in there. Pokemon and Fire Emblem. Yeah, looks like a combo of the two. Mm. Well, this makes sense. Those two are kind of the in things right now. And if you put in petting, that'll be fun. Well, hey, you know, I wish them the best of luck, but um, it just looks very heavily like a... I mean, as long as they don't use any sprite assets from either of those games, or obviously edited ones, from it, they should be fine, but I mean, it almost feels like a very, I mean, heck, just watching the gameplay, it, it looks like Pokemon. It, it, it looks exactly like Pokemon. Yeah, and I doubt that uh, they took any assets from Pokemon. From what I see here, most of the art is pixel art, and most of the characters are done with the Pony Pixel Maker, or 
you know one of those people who does the pony pixels. It looks like it's been done there. I, I wish them the best of luck on it, but it uh yeah, it seems like it could be on the edge, you know? Yeah, one of those probably. Games. Like it needs a lot of money at the same time too. But, but still Yeah, I yeah, I I'd say they may want to work a little bit more on the art style just to try and separate it from it itself to make it stand out more as its own thing, but eh, right. what can you do? True, true. And talking about money, you ever wanted to buy a pony plush but can't afford it because of how expensive they really are? Mm. But White Dove certainly is yet worth it. That She's an true, artist. True, that, true, that. Like White Dove's creation stuff are expensive, but they're worth the money. So if I don't have the money for that, though, what can I do, Norman? Well, the second best thing is 4DE. But if you can't afford 4DE, Hasbro has a big lineup of pony plush on their way. It's a budget, it's affordable, and it looks okay. <laughs> they look very budget-like, like this was done on a shoestring budget. Yeah, and I think it's about five bucks per pony. Oh, okay. Well, that I understand. I mean, yeah, that looks like a five buck plush. But to be honest, I'd kind of willingly shell out for the 4DE at that point. Yeah, what, you add in uh, the $40 or $20? Yeah. I, I actually, oh my gosh, the, okay, the, the Beanie Baby Pinkie Pie plush that I have that I got for four bucks has better detail in it. <laughs> uh, no, no comment, yo. But still, it's one of those toys that, you can have on the site just to be, when I say I have a plush, it's affordable, and I can hug it when I go to bed. I don't have space for plushies in my bed. I I would probably just destroy them in the middle of the night sleeping, because that's how I go through pillows. Oh my. And I always dream of marshmallows. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you need a rarity plush. <laughs> No, because then I, I'll wake up with, with you know a half-eaten rarity <laughs> plush in the morning, and I'll just be like, dang it! <laughs> Can't have this much linen in my diet. Bad. <laughs> uh, boys. But if you're interested in buying them, you can get them on Amazon. And not only those plush, you can get a lot of other toys too. It seems that, well, uh, the Guardians of Harmony, Queen Chrysalis, and the Changeling set are available now. And these are the same thing as uh, your... Um, Celestia figures, you know those Guardian of Harmony one thing that really looks really the cool. The Guardian of Harmony sets, the uh, the ones where they take the ponies and they actually make them look freaking awesome, like they're in some battle action pose. And yeah, um, they did one with Celestia, they did one with Nightmare Moon, they did one with Discord. I think they did one with Discord. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, okay, and um, now they got one with Chrysalis and two little changelings, and it looks really menacing and cool, mm-hmm. and definitely one I want to get of Swiss. Uh, uh, of Swiss cheese legs. <laughs> yep, yep. It's not just the uh, chrysalis statue. There's also new min- uh, Equestria Girls minis, uh, apparently one of Adagio. Yeah, and talking about Adagio, like, look at the packaging. I mean, he, usually I don't really pay attention to the mini. Well, I do pay attention. I want to collect most of them. But if you take a look-see at this one, um, there's... The, they represent or they show a picture of Adagio as a pony, and she's a unicorn. What? <laughs> well, maybe she was originally a pony and she turned into a siren. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, too. I think it, this is one of those things where, hmm, I don't think you guys are communicating. Like, are you sure? Like, I don't see the communication here. I, I think you're far off course. And besides... She would not be that adorable. Oh, true. She's supposed to be evil. <laughs> this is you. She's adorable to some people on film fiction. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because they turn her into they turn her and her sisters into whoobies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh no, we lost our power, and now we're dying slowly. Or we <laughs> used to be immortal, now we have to deal with the fact that we're mortal. Or oh my gosh, you destroyed our only way to eat, and now we're slowly starving to death. Screw you, people. <laughs> yeah, sure. Fine, yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah. <laughs> But still, but still, there's other toys in the lineup too, like, um, ponies and purses? <laughs> I'm sure that's a trend. Ponies and purses, brushables. Actually, I gotta say, I do like the budget Luna and the budget Celestia. Those look kinda cute. Are you talking about the plush ones? Yeah, the plush ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking here and no, you know, there's another 
version of the plush. Like the first plush that you mentioned, they have spaghetti mane. Now this one, they have cuddly manes, like real doll manes. I don't know. Yeah, they have just like poofy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those those look better. Those look much better. Yep, yep. And on to the chrysalis thing. Um, I'm checking the price and it's thirty dollars. And I'm looking at the packaging and it says fan series. It means that we know what fans really want is this. So we're gonna put effort on it, just a little, not too much. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think I saw this at my local GameStop, what? so I'm contemplating going back there and just grabbing it. You mean chrysalis? <laughs> Yeah, Chrysalis. Go do it, man. If you can get me well, one. Well, I can't get you one, man. I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it, it's just, uh, it's 30 bucks. It's a bit to throw down. That That's a good amount of groceries there. Uh, and true that. I do like eating. I do like eating. Well, get me one and I'll pay, the, I'll pay for it and the shipping. <laughs> okay. There's a reason I only buy video games when it's like, you know, super on sale. Uh, true that, true that. Uh, but still, th- those are the toys. And talking about Celestia and Luna, right? Like, <laughs> and also Equestria Girls. It seems that we have a book in the My Little Pony Equestria Girls lineup. Uh, Wonder Cults Forever, The Diary of Celestia and Luna. Yay! Right, so we had the diary of... The two sisters. ...princesses. Uh-huh. And now we have the diary of the less interesting humans. <laughs> you say that, but in all honesty, uh, the story goes... Um, head back to Cantalot High School with Luna and Celestia in this uh, replica of the Teenage Sisters Journal. Read their first-hand accounts and discover Cantalot High from the young girl's point of view. So this could be them when they were younger. Yay! Boo! They're teenage girls. If I wanted to hear this, I'd just watch Mean Girls again. But they're not Celestia and Luna. I would really like this. Yeah. Story. Who cares if they're not Celestia and Luna? I mean, for crying out loud. What is so wrong with just wanting to see Lindsay Lohan get punched in the face again? All right? <laughs> that is much more interesting than seeing human Celestia and Luna deal with high school drama. I don't know. I mean, I, I would really want to see, like, some of the hijinks that they put in here because if you read the novel or the book for um, Camp Everfree. What was that series called? I, I forgot, but you know, the Ford movie, Everfree thingy with superpowers. Yeah, that one, that, that book series. Power Ponies? No, no, no. Remember the Ford movie? Yes, yeah, the third movie. No, no, Ford. Okay, the fourth movie, Legend of Everfree. Yes, thank you. Like Legend of Everfree. Um, Silver told me that there's a line that they didn't add into the movie where... Um, Luna got banished from the cabin because of this agreement. Oh, great. Yeah, because that's so much more interesting than, you know, the actual banishment of a semi-demigod who had to almost brought about Eternal Night. No, no, no. The, 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 uh, the average everyday struggles of the modern teenage girl is just as interesting. Mm-hmm. Hey, I mean, mm-hmm. it's more content. It's like what you read on film fiction. James... There's no way you're going to convince me that this is anything interesting, all right? And I will definitely take the worst fan fiction over this tripe. You say that. Because at least with fan fiction, I can get something out of it. I can, I, I can at least mock the person and laugh at the weirdness of it. I would rather read another self-insert human and equestrian <laughs> fic than read this book. Well, this could. I be- would rather I would rather watch Dusk's Dawn than read this book. Oh, uh, but this could be the similar to insert character here. Okay, didn't want to bring this out, but gosh, man, there is nothing <laughs> you can do to make me read this book. Nothing, absolutely, gosh, darn. Nothing. Uh, I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> I'll think of something. Uh, boys. Uh, but that's the news for this week. Uh, besides that, um, been slow start to the year. There's a lot of con going on, but eh, we're far, we're busy, we have lives, so yeah, I can't do much about that, right? Yeah, well, my plan is to go to BronyCon this year. And that's about it. Ah, you helping again, or you're just gonna be going to? Oh no, I helped at 
I helped at MLP, MSP. I, I think I'm just going to go as a person. Plus, I want to, I want to meet a couple people and see old friends and whatnot. And, uh-huh. uh, plus, uh, uh, Maddie, Mad Munchkin is going to be making her way to BronyCon this year. And I promised that I'd buy her her first experience of Five Guys Burgers and Fries. <laughs> uh, good luck, man. And yeah, Maddie is going there. I, I wish I was going there too, but yeah, money and location. Airfares. Are- That's not a word. Oh, yep. That is true. That is true. Like I did the research and 10k, brother, 10k. What 10k for you to fly over here? Yep. Seriously? Yep. How much for a boat? <laughs> uh, probably more because of the long distances. Oh, gee, man! Why the heck do you live in the middle of nowhere? I don't live in the middle of nowhere. I live in the middle of Asia. Oh, my... Where's the problem? You live in the middle of Asia. <laughs> it's not my fault. Uh, oh, but, but... That stinks, though, man. Ten thousand dollars? No, no, no. That is... That's my local currency. Um, for you, you have to divide that by four. But still, oh, hefty amount of cash. Okay, okay. So, so we're talking more like two thousand dollars. All right, that that for a round trip. With international, that makes a bit more sense. Okay, I was like, ten thousand dollars. What does he have to fly? Does he, does he have to charter a private plane to get out of wherever he is? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's the same thing. Like when you say that um, Guardians of Harmony toy or figure is just thirty dollars. To me, you have to times that by four. So it's like, oh. yeah. And any other games that you have, like sixty dollars for a full retail price game. You have times that, times that by four, so it's like, yeah. The last time I paid sixty dollars for a game was the only time I knew it'd be worth it, and that was Final Fantasy Fifteen. It's basically if I rent a game and I find myself okay, I'm definitely going to spend more than twenty bucks. forty to sixty. Oh. If I'm going to spend more than forty to sixty hours on this thing, it's definitely worth my money. But if it's going to be less than that, like Call of Duty, God. yeah, re- re- rent it for a day, beat it, return it, never talk about it again. Unless if there's a good multiplayer in it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Call of Duty. There's no good multiplayer in it. I'm sorry, but I, I like multiplayer. That's fun. I'm not some twitchy shooter that I get raged at by 15-year-olds who wouldn't survive if I decided to boot up Quake 3. <laughs> uh, but Titanfall, try that one. I heard it was good. Can't. That's a Microsoft exclusive, and I'm not uh, buying a Titanfall Two. Then Titanfall Two. Oh, well. Um, Multi console. If it goes on sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do agree on that one. Like, not gonna say that I'm gonna support EA, but if it's a good game, go buy it. Their mecha's cool. Yay! Giant mecha. Yeah. When was the last time you played a giant robot? Um, Zone of the Enders. And how long was that? Um, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, we need some mecha shooters in our life. Though I kind of wish they would revitalize the Mech Warrior series. That was Didn't fun. They? Well, they may have, but it hasn't been public enough or something, or I don't know about it. Oh, but yeah. I, I played the heck out of Mech Warrior Four. Hmm. Or heck, if so, I mean Star Wars is popular now. Why doesn't? Di- Okay, I mean, I grew up on them, but those space flight Star Wars simulators, those were complicated but awesomely fun. Well, it was, it was Elite Dangerous. It was Elite Dangerous but Star Wars style. Yeah, but if you want something similar to that, like they have the Star Wars Battlefront. The, no, no, that is nothing like X-Wing and nothing like TIE Fighter. The battle, Battlefront is a first-person twitchy shooter that is imbalanced as hell. Well, right, there is... they have the flying part of it. No, no, Norman, this is completely different. You know, I gotta get you Tie Fighter and have you play it because you would definitely agree with me. Well, not gonna say that I disagree, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I I just want a mech game where I can just no, you know what? No, no, it's not a mech game. I want something like Zone of the Enders, fast-paced robot flying shoot. Bang game, like yeah. Macross missiles everywhere, yeah, man. I know what you mean. Well, Tie Fighter definitely isn't that, but um, what is cool, man, is you're you're basically like the soldier of the Empire, flying all those different Tie Fighters <laughs> and space dog fighting missions. And one of the latest, and one of the later missions, you actually get to boss around Darth Vader. What? How? 
Um, he's flying his own special TIE fighter, and he says, I will delegate the situation to you. <laughs> so, so you get to, so you get to say, you get to say, um, Vader 1, attack target Alpha. <laughs> and he'll, and he'll, and he'll, and he'll go open up a can of whoop ass on him. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Oh, can you just imagine the guy, like, okay, just imagine in your head, like, if you're with the galaxy and Vader gives you the, okay, you can tell me what to do. It's like, oh my god. I get to tell Vader what to do. <laughs> oh, could you just imagine that? Oh god. Well, actually, it's in a mission where you're trying to save the Empire, the Emperor from being killed, so. Yeah, but still, could you just imagine? Uh, but, uh... The best part about it is that it's actually a very long game with plenty of missions and submissions. And the coolest part, in my opinion, was it was a great EU. Expander. Oh, um, EU as in the European expanded nation. Universe. Oh, expanded. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm an expanded universe. All right. Um, what did uh, one of the funniest things it is like? <laughs> we are so certain of the rebels being absolutely crushed at Endor that we're going to send your highly trained units on a completely different mission after a, after a traitor in this direction of the galaxy on the other side. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, that won't bite them in the ass at all. Yeah, totally. Totally. No, no, nothing at Endor. Nothing at all. No, though I will say this game, this game spawned the most badass uh, villain in all of Star Wars, yeah. which I think they said they are bringing him to the new universe. And you know, the, 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 re- the yeah. who, 7, 8, 9. General Thrawn. Oh, haven't heard of him. Blue guy. Oh, Absolutely menacing. Him. Absolutely menacing. As cunning as the Emperor and as insidious as Darth Vader. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, he's, he's in Star Wars Rebels. Oh, oh, cool. They brought him back yeah, and okay. he is, oh my god. That character there, he, in, in, how they portray him in the canon universe is, or in this universe, is that he's calculative. His, uh, how do I put this? He is cunning and a technical He's genius. Cunning, confident, yes. cunning, confident, smug as all hell, yes. and and suave as frick. Yeah, and at the same time too, he respects tradition. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what made him such a great villain. Uh, well, but the cool part is in Tie Fighters, I believe Tie Fighters what introduced him to the uh, universe and really set his stage as you actually get commanded by him to pull off some really amazing moves. Oh, wow, that's cool. I, I, won't, I, I won't spoil any of the things that, the spoilers for it, but um, he does pull off a very cunning way of defeating an enemy who who will be introduced very early in the game and is, like, basically the final villain of the whole thing. Ooh. So, yeah. But, but um, well, we've talked for a while about Star Wars now, haven't we? <laughs> I mean, there's no pony news. We've done most of the pony news out there, and why not, right? We have other things that we like. Yeah, okay. Well, I was thinking, you know, after these news things, um, I've been watching a lot of reviewers just, just you know, in my off hours of work and whatnot, and I'd be willing, I mean, if you're willing to do it, but after the news, I mean, if we got nothing else to talk about, I just like a two-minute blurb of, hey, I've been checking out this reviewer, here's what they do, and... They're pretty cool. Go check out their stuff and give them a watch. You think we could probably do that? Yeah, I mean, we are, we're still on tape, so why not, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, maybe we could, uh, hey, if that works out. And, hey, if, if the audience wants to start hearing something like that, let us know because that would be a nice little section that help us spread more people's uh, knowledge because, you know, hey, there's a bunch of people that are doing videos besides us, and they're pretty cool too, so you should check them out too. Yeah, true, true. Oh, by the way, he's Grand Admiral Tall. Oh, Grand Admiral Thrawn, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And whew, he, he looks badass. Oh, he is. He is something else. Yep, they brought him back. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but you say you've been seeing a lot of reviewers. So who have you seen? Oh, um, one I just recently binged through entirely was called uh, Emerald Comet. He reviews uh, uh, fan fictions. Hmm. He's released about 20 videos. Um, pretty good. He's pretty funny. Tries to work a little bit of a storyline into his stuff, but uh, other than that, he's a good reviewer of fan fiction, and I do love me fan fiction. Fan fiction or film fiction? Well, both. 
a lot of the fanfics he finds that are on Fimfic. But uh, uh he's got a um I, I would say his later videos definitely start uh he's he's definitely got gotten into a groove of what he wants to review like and he is actually pretty funny. Yeah, so Emerald Comet, you can find uh Comet, that's uh E M E R A L D C O M E T. You can find his stuff on uh, YouTube, and you can find his uh, film fiction page as well for fix that he writes. Oh, cool. Give him a, give him a look-see if you want to hear what he has to say about some film fictions. Recently, he just reviewed, uh, uh, a couple months ago, he just reviewed uh, Past Sins. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if you want to hear the thoughts of someone and on that, <laughs> oh, have fun. Oh, well, I, I gotta see, because I know what past sins is, <laughs> and I couldn't be bothered to read that long story, so, yeah, an abridged version, somebody, yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah, he, him and another person, uh, review it, it's a collab. <laughs> Personally, though, um, my only beef with past sins is, uh, the, the design of Nyx. Like, uh, okay, the Philly without the clothing and the glasses and the headband and all that stuff, fine. But with all that clothing tacked on, it's just gaudy as heck. <laughs> I think it could be the design of the, what you would call this, artist. Not good, man. And not saying anything about it. Well, you, you have that for the YouTubes, right? So I'm just going to drop in mine that I always watch. And they're called The Switcher with a One. They're not per se um, related to ponies. But they are just normal YouTubers who do Let's Play videos and... I like them. I watch them every day because they produce videos for every day. So yeah, they're, they're a cool bunch of people. Like, if you have the time, go watch it and you'll understand my humor if you listen to them. Ah, uh, wait. So are, are these the two best friends play th- series? Yes, it's them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen their stuff before. Yeah. Two best friends play. Yeah. Yep. It's them. But still, I mean, we we could do this series in the future, like recommend things we watch. Yay! But we we do that in the beginning of the show. But hey, still something new. Uh, but anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at animeshowgmail dot com. Like if you have any ideas for a segment, like what we just did off the cuff, yeah, we could do that. Oh, uh, you could reach us on the twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Or me personally at Norman Sanzo. And Wills, where can the good people find you? Oh, uh, well, if you guys want to find me, you can find me, uh, W-I-L-I-Z-I-N on YouTube, on Film Fiction, and on DeviantArt. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVerLife.com. And also we have this review show that we do every week. It's called, uh, MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. Yay. Uh, very original. On that show, we review the MLP episodes, the comics, the movies, and sometimes we deviate to games, um, movies, or have a general discussion about stuff like the characteristics of a pony or other things like... What was the last thing I did? Ah, boys. What was... Crystal and Pai, was it? Uh, I don't know. I remember that was the one you were on. But still, um, we do a lot. So, stick around. Go listen to that. Subscribe to the um, podcast house of the idea. It's really cool. Like, the more subs we get, the more we have energy to do this. Because, yeah, we need the energy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the more you people sub, the... The more we'll be able to talk, the more we'll be able to do things, and the less you sub, the uh, more I have to start using the poker on uh, on uh, Norman here. The poker? Don't you mean the kettle prop? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I call it the poker because uh, that's the thing I say when I uh, jab you with it with the electricity. Oh. <laughs> oh. So that's what you call it. Alrighty then. Yeah. So anywho, if you don't want me to get zapped, please do subscribe. Please. Do it, people. I'm not afraid to use this thing on him. <laughs> oh, no. But anywho, um, links will be in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. And we will guys catch you next week for another fun show of the MBS show. Bye. Goodbye, people.